Hello. Good evening. Hello, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Good night. Night. Okay, we are going to wait for the others. Vamos a esperar un momento a los otros. To begin with this new session. Okay, yesterday we were talking about um, the regular and irregular verbs. Estuvimos viendo algo de los verbos regulares e irregulares. Um, we were like seeing some uh, examples. Uh, we have two different um, lists. Ustedes ya tienen las dos listas en el grupo de los diferentes verbos, tanto de los regulares como los irregulares. Y ya les sirven a ustedes para hacer sus prácticas, ¿verdad? Para que vayan practicando con lo que son sus eh, verbos. Así que pueden encontrar los dos eh, documentos en el grupo de WhatsApp. We also were uh, talking about the use of the present simple or simple present. Estuvimos hablando del uso del presente simple. Estuvimos viendo um, <clears throat> en qué situaciones utilizamos nosotros este presente simple. Veíamos unas cuantas cosas. Que voy a poner la pantalla para que vayamos recordando un poco lo que vimos ayer. So, these are the things that we were learning yesterday. And in this case, we were talking about the, um, the uses of the simple present. ¿Cuáles fueron los usos o cuáles eran los usos que estuvimos viendo el día de ayer? In this case, we have four different uses. The number one is to express habits, general truths, repeated action, or unchanging situations. Um, we were also talking about um, how to give instructions or directions um, using the simple present. Number three, in this case, we were talking about how to express a fixed arrangement, present or future. And in the number four, uh, how to express future time after some conjunction. Así que estuvimos viendo algunos eh, de estos usos que se le puede dar a el verbo, en este caso, al, al presente simple, utilizando Um, el verbo to be o los verbos irregulares y a los verbos regulares. So, we are going to continue with the topics that we are going to develop today. In this case, um, it is related to the same thing. Vamos a hablar siempre del de presente simple, solo que en este caso no vamos a hablar solo de eh, oraciones, porque hemos venido viendo solo um, statements or sentences, but in this case, we are going to talk about questions. Because we have here some examples of verbs and sentence, but now we are going to talk about questions. 
vamos a hablar de preguntas, cómo crear preguntas eh, con el presente simple. So, in this case, we're going to change here. And the topic for today is present questions. Preguntas en presente. That is the topic. But we have an objective. Tenemos un objetivo. And it says, by the end of this class, you will be able to form simple present questions. Additionally, you will practice a conversation um, about daily routines, which illustrates how this topic is used in real life setting. Vamos a... Eh, hablar sobre la creación de las preguntas, cómo podemos nosotros eh, hacer preguntas con el presente simple. But also we are going to listen a conversation in which they are talking about um, daily routines and uh, how uh, can people use these questions in real life to ask something about um, the daily routines. Vamos a hablar también de las rutinas diarias y cómo podemos nosotros hacer estas preguntas hacia otras personas, eh, porque vamos a crear preguntas con el presente simple, que nos van a ayudar también con esto de los daily routines, las rutinas diarias que tenemos nosotros en nuestra vida cotidiana. So I'm going to write the objective and then we are going to begin with the information of the questions. Aquí está de las rutinas diarias o de eh, las cosas que nosotros hacemos con regularidad. Recuerden que estuvimos viendo cómo se creaban oraciones eh, utilizando el presente simple. En este caso, eh, we have like a very simple structure that we can use to create a statement using the uh, regular and irregular verbs. In this case, we can also use the verb to be. And, um, and they are like a couple of um, elements that we need to use. And in this case, we need um, the pronoun or the subject of the sentence. Then we need the verb and the complement. And in some cases, we need the verb to be to complete the statement. Solo necesitamos un par de eh, elementos para poder formar nuestra oración con el presente simple. Vamos a, a ver un poco sobre la creación de las preguntas. Eh, algunos elementos que necesitamos conocer para crear preguntas en, en presente simple y también vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. En este caso no nos vamos a enfocar en, en negativos ni en tiempo presente o cosas así, sino que más que todo en las preguntas. Pero sí vamos a ver un poco de información sobre las preguntas y cómo eh, se forman estas preguntas. 
So, the first thing is that the present tense is the base form of the verb. Cuando hablamos del presente o del tiempo presente, cuando hablamos en inglés, en este caso estamos hablando de la forma base del verbo, donde no le agregamos absolutamente nada y lo utilizamos así como aparece en su, eh, en el documento que ustedes tienen, aparece en, el, en la primera columna, That is the base form of the verb. Esa es la forma base y es el que vamos a estar utilizando para las oraciones en presente simple. So, the first thing. The present tense is the base form of the verb. And we have an example. I work in London. Yo trabajo en Londres. I work. Este es el verbo work. Y está en presente porque estamos utilizando la forma base de este verbo. And in some cases we can uh, have uh, different words that have something else, but... Uh, in this case, we are not going to use that complement. En algunos casos, aparecen los verbos que llevan to, una T y una O antes del verbo. Pero en ese caso, no los estamos utilizando, sino que simplemente estamos utilizando la palabra. And in this case, remember that with the third person singular, uh, we are going to change a little bit the verbs because we are going to use Eh, or to add S at the end. Cuando hablamos de la tercera persona, le vamos a agregar una S al final del verbo. En muchos de los casos solo es la S, pero en otros es S, I, E, S, O, E, S. Son los cambios que se le va a hacer al verbo, pero no va a cambiar su forma en general. So, let's see. Cuando hablamos de tercera persona singular, nos estamos refiriendo a he, she, and it. Son singulares. Habla de uno solo. We add an S. Una S. And we have the example. Tenemos el ejemplo por acá. And it says, she works in London. Es el mismo verbo, solo que le agregamos S al final. She works in London. So, we're going to make some statements and we're going to see some difference between them. Vamos a hacer algunas preguntas, pero en este caso vamos a utilizar el to y el does. No vamos a utilizar el verbo to be porque ya estamos entrando en un tense, en un tiempo, en el tiempo presente. Y no simplemente en el uso del verbo to be para preguntas. So in this, in this case, we are going to use the auxiliary do. Este auxiliar solo nos da la pauta para que nosotros sepamos ¿verdad? que estamos realizando una pregunta, pero no le va a hacer un gran cambio a la estructura o a la... Um, a la interpretación que nosotros tenemos de la frase. So, let's see some eh, present simple questions. So, I'm going to write some example of these questions. And the number one we have, do you play the piano? Do you play the piano? Tocas el piano. In this case, we are using do. That is the auxiliary. Este es el auxiliar. Play is our verb. Este es el verbo. En este caso no es jugar, es tocar. Do you play the piano? Tocas el piano. Number two. Where do you live? Aquí estamos agregando las WH words. Where do you live? ¿Dónde vives? Where do 
and in this case, leave. Number three, does Jack play football? We have the auxiliary and we have the verb. Pero en este caso, en la número tres, estamos hablando de Jack. Y Jack representa a él. Es un he en los pronombres. ¿Por qué yo no estoy agregándole la S al verbo si estoy utilizando una tercera persona en singular? Who knows what is the answer? ¿Quién sabe la respuesta a eso? ¿Por qué no le estoy agregando S a ese verbo? Because in this case, you use does. Exactly. Thank you, Gerson. Exactamente lo que dijo Gerson. We are using the auxiliary does. Estamos utilizando el auxiliar aquí, que ya va en cambio, ya se cambió para tercera persona, ya se adaptó, y ya no necesito cambiar yo mi main verb. Ya no cambio mi verbo principal porque ya tengo un auxiliar que me lo está cambiando. Él, él ya me está diciendo que estoy hablando de tercera persona y ya no necesito volver a ponerlo. Good. Next one. Number four. Where does he come from? Where does he come from? Again, the same situation. Tenemos la misma situación. El auxiliar does... And we have the verb come. But in this case, we're using come from together because we are talking about a place. Then we have number five. Do Rita and Angela live in Manchester? Do Rita and Angela live in Manchester? And we have do, that is the auxiliary, and we have leave, that is the verb. And we have another one, that is the last one. Esta es la última, number six. Where do they work? Where do they work? Again, the auxiliary do. And we have the verb. So we have some example of questions and we can see um, what are the structures that we are using in these cases. Vemos las estructuras que estamos utilizando. En muchos de los casos, like in the number one, we have the auxiliary, auxiliary do, Plus the subject plus the verb plus the complement plus the question mark. Esa es la estructura que estamos siguiendo ahí. Ahora, and the next one, number two, WH word. Plus auxiliary plus subject plus complement plus question mark. I mean question mark. Ahí tenemos una WH word que son las palabras que utilizamos para crear preguntas. Then we are going to use the same as the number one. But in this case, it's does. Then we have another one with the WH word. Another with the auxiliary do. And the last one is with the 
WH word. Así que esas son las estructuras con las que nosotros podemos crear preguntas. Eh, primero podemos poner el auxiliar do or does, then the subject, then the verb, then the complement and the question mark. Or we can create a statements or questions with WH word plus the auxiliary do or does, plus the subject, plus the complement, plus question mark. Podemos utilizar esas preguntas haciendo eh, el uso de las WH words que ya las conocemos. What, when, where, why, who, how come, and a lot of words more. Y así creamos nuestras eh, preguntas utilizando el do y el does. Eh, we use do and does to make questions with the present simple. We use does for the third person singular that we know that they are she, he, it, and do for the others. And also we use do and does with questions where like eh, where, what, and when. Cuando estamos utilizando las palabras what, when, and where, que en este caso where es donde, what, que, and when, cuando, vamos a utilizar el do y el does. Más que todo cuando utilicemos esas tres WH words. So we're going to see some examples. Number one, where do Angela and Rita live? Donde vive Rita y Angela? Number two, what does Angela do? Que hace Angela? And number three, when does Rita usually get up? Cuando se levanta o se despierta normalmente Rita. But when we have questions that uh, use who, we are not going to use do or does. En este caso, cuando tenemos where, what, and when, que son estas tres que están al final, vamos a utilizar el do y el does. Pero en el caso de who, la pregunta quién, no vamos a utilizar el do o el does. And we have some examples. Number one, who lives in London? Who lives in London? Number two, who plays football at the weekend? And number three, who works on at Liverpool City Hospital?
So in this case, remember that when we are using who, we are not going to use the auxiliary do and does. Cuando ya tengamos la pregunta quién, no vamos a ponerle el do o el does. Les voy a escribir otros ejemplos de preguntas y pasamos a lo siguiente. In this example we have, where do you come from? Number two, do you come from? And we can write the name of the city, um, the name of the country or something like that. Number three, where do you live? Number four, do you live in? And we can say the name of the place or the city or the country. Number five, what work do you do? ¿Qué trabajo haces? What work do you do? Number six, do you like? And we can ask something. Do you like play football, watch TV, listen to music, whatever thing we want to ask. Do you know? Do you know my cousin? Do you know me? Estas son algunas preguntas que nosotros podemos adaptar y uh, más que todo para esto de las presentaciones, cuando queremos conocer a alguien y saber más de esa persona, podemos hacer este tipo de preguntas. So, um, we are going to listen to a conversation in which people are using questions with a present simple and we are going to... Um, read the statements that we are going to find on the conversation. Vamos a escuchar la conversación donde están hablando de este tema de las preguntas y vamos a ver qué información vamos a recopilar de allí. So, give me a second. I'm going to stop this one and I'm going to go to the platform. Vamos a entrar a la plataforma. And we are going to listen to the conversation. So give me a second. Okay. Here we have the video. Okay, here we have the conversation. Let's pay attention and listen to the conversation. Vamos a poner atención a escuchar la conversación. So, let's go. This in a conversation which illustrates how this conversation, which conversation, which how this topic is used in a real life setting. I would like to get started by practicing a conversation which illustrates how this topic is used. Let's listen and practice. Let's go to the park on Sunday. Okay, but let's go in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. What time do you get up on Sundays? At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sundays, I get up at noon. Do you eat breakfast then? Sure, I have breakfast every day. Then let's meet at this restaurant at 1 o'clock. They serve breakfast all day. We just heard a conversation in which lots of questions were asked and answer. I would like to explain how these questions are formed. Let me start by explaining the auxiliary verbs that are used when forming questions in the simple. 
Okay, in this case, we have um, the explanation of the use of the auxiliaries. That is the same thing that we were uh, doing uh, before. Uh, but we are going to talk about this conversation. But let me stop this one. And I'm going to show you the image of the conversation on the document. So let's see. I'm going to show you the image and then we are going to read again the statements and the questions that we can find on that conversation. So give me a second and I'm going to show you the image. Okay, I have here the conversation and I'm going to show you the statements. Here we have, this is the conversation. We have two people here. We have Jack and Amy and the conversations, uh, it's called, I get up at noon. Es como decir, yo me levanto al mediodía, aproximadamente at noon, y comenzamos con Jack. Let's go to the park on Sunday. Él le dice, vamos al parque el, el, el domingo, I mean. And Amy said, okay, but let's go in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. Ella está de acuerdo y le dice, está bien, vamos en la tarde. Yo duermo hasta tarde los fines de semana. And he asked, what time do you get up on Sundays? ¿A qué horas te levantan los domingos? And she said, at 10 o'clock, a las 10 de la mañana. And he said, oh, that's early. On Sundays, I get up at noon. Oh, eso es bastante temprano. Yo me levanto al mediodía. Do you eat breakfast then? Eh, ¿Te comes el desayuno o desayunas? Sure, I have breakfast every day. Seguro, yo siempre desayuno. Then, let's meet at this restaurant at one o'clock. They serve breakfast all day. Entonces, vamos a comer a este restaurante a la una. Ellos siempre sirven el desayuno. So, in this case, they are uh, talking about a daily routines of the weekend. Están hablando de las rutinas que tienen los fines de semana. Um, they say that they um, wake up uh, late on Sundays. Ellos se levantan tarde los domingos. I mean, um, it's something that we want to do uh, on weekends because we have a lot of work to do during the week. But in the case of those people that um, are working on the weekends, it is not possible. But it is like a dream. Eh, yo creo que la mayoría cuando tenemos los fines de semana libres, lo que queremos es dormir hasta tarde. Pero creo que hay muchos que no podemos porque ya estamos acostumbrados a nuestro horario y ya no podemos dormir más allá de las seis, I, I guess. But in this case, they uh, sleep a lot. Ellos duermen bastante el fin de semana, más que todo en el día domingo. So we have this conversation and we are going to make a little practice. Vamos a hacer una pequeña práctica. Vamos a dividirnos en grupos pequeños para que podamos practicarla. Uh, we are going to have like five minutes to do the practice. Cinco minutos, leemos nuestra eh, conversación y terminamos nuestra práctica. We're going to read again the sentence. Vamos a leer otra vez las eh, oraciones y luego hacemos nuestra práctica. Oración número uno. Let's go to the park on Sunday. Let's go to the park on Sunday. Number two. Eh, oración número dos. Okay, but let's go in the afternoon. Okay, but let's go in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. I sleep late on weekends. La siguiente. What time do you get up on Sundays? What time do you get up on Sundays? At 
10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sundays, I get up at noon. Oh, that's early. On Sundays, I get up at noon. Do you eat breakfast then? Do you eat breakfast then? Sure, I have breakfast every day. Sure, I have breakfast every day. Then let's meet at this restaurant at one o'clock. Then let's meet at this restaurant at one o'clock. They serve breakfast all day. They serve breakfast all day. Los que puedan eh, tomar una screenshot de la conversación estaría perfecto porque a la hora de entrar a los grupos se va a quitar la pantalla y no van a poder estar viendo la conversación. So, if you want to take a screenshot, it will be okay. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop sharing and we're going to make a small groups. Okay. Let me see, let me see. We are 11, 10, good. I'm going to do it in couples. Vamos a hacerlos en parejas para que sea mucho más fácil. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So, let's go. Les va a aparecer un mensaje en la pantalla para que puedan accesar a su breakout room. Así que vamos a comenzar. Okay, Mirna, you need to go to the breakout room. Necesita entrar en el breakout room. Ah, oh, otro teacher. Mm -hmm. Hi, teacher. We can start. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to the part on Sunday. Okay, but let's go in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. What time do you get up on Sunday? At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sundays, I get up at noon. Do you eat breakfast then? Sure, I have breakfast every day. Then let's meet at the restaurant at one o'clock. They serve, serve breakfast all day. 
Okay, very good. Muy bien hecho. I'm going to watch the other uh, rooms and we are going to um, wait a couple of minutes. Solo vamos a esperar un par de minutos, voy a ir a las otras rooms y luego regresamos, pero muy bien hecho. Okay, okay thank you. Oh, Edwin, you are alone. Sí, me dejaron solo. Vale, en ese caso vamos a hacer la práctica usted y yo. Así que no se preocupe por su okay. práctica. Usted Jack, yo soy Amy. Cuando esté listo, comenzamos. Usted Jay. No, usted Jake, yo soy Amy. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Eh, te quiero iniciamos entonces. Ok. Eh, let's go to the park on Sunday. Ok, but let's go in the ah. afternoon. I sleep late on weekend. What time do you get up on Sunday? At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sunday I get up and no. Did you eat breakfast then? Sure, I had breakfast every day. Then let's meet at this restaurant at one o'clock. They serve breakfast all day. Okay, thank you. Muy bien hecho. Voy a ir a las otras rooms y ya regresamos a la main session. Okay. Ahí estaría. Regresamos al. Ah, ok. Yo creo que regresamos ya al. Al salón. O seguimos. No, seguimos. Ok. Let's go to the bar on Sunday. Ok, but let's go to in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. What time do you get on Sunday? Get, perdón, what time do At you ten, get up on Sunday? At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sunday, I got up at noon. Do you can breakfast them? No, do you eat? Can do you eat? Ah, sorry. Uh, it was in on the at ten o'clock on the early on Sunday. I get up at noon. Dijiste tú. Entonces yo te estoy respondiendo. Do you can breakfast them? Es que do you do you eat? Do you eat de comer? Ajá, uh -huh. breakfast de. Ajá. Uh -huh. Do you eat do you can... breakfast? Ajá, uh -huh. sorry. Do you eat breakfast de? Ah, yes. Sure, I have breakfast every day. The let's meet at the at this restaurant at uh, one o'clock. They serve breakfast all day. Ok, very good, excellent, excelente trabajo. Solo reviso dos grupos más y regresamos a la main session. Ok. Ok. Comenzar la conversación, empieza usted otra vez. Let's go to the park on Sunday. Oh, but let's go in the afternoon. I sleep late on weekends. What time do you get up on Sunday? At 10 o'clock. Oh, that's early. On Sunday, I get up at noon. Do you eat breakfast then? Sure, 
I have breakfast every day. They next meet at the restaurant at one o'clock. They serve breakfast at day. Okay, very good. Excellent work. Muy bien hecho. Solo reviso un grupo más y regresamos a la main session. Excelente. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> They serve breakfast every day. Okay, I was at the end of the conversation, but excellent work. Excelente trabajo. Vine solo al final de su conversación, pero sé que hicieron muy buena práctica. Vamos a regresar a la main session. Ya les voy a mandar la invitación para regresar. Okay, gracias. Okay, we are here in the main session again. Estamos de nuevo en la eh, sesión principal. Eh, I was listening to your practice and let me tell you that you did a great job. Hicieron un excelente trabajo en la práctica. Eh, felicidades por eso and thank you for your participation. Vamos a continuar, but now we are going to have a knowledge check. Vamos a tener un knowledge check de los que están en la plataforma. We are going to see the knowledge check 1.10. Vamos a ver el 1.10. ¿De qué se trata? Lo vamos a resolver. Y ustedes van a ir tomando sus anotaciones. O si ya lo hicieron, vamos a ir chequeando nuestras respuestas. Y si no lo han hecho, pues es el momento para que se puedan poner a hacer esta actividad. Si usted no la ha hecho todavía, usted puede accesar a la plataforma y empezar a responderla junto con los demás. So. This is the knowledge check 1.10, and we are going to unscrabble the questions uh, to complete the conversations, write the questions in the blank. This time, you don't, you don't need to type a question mark at the end. Vamos a descifrar, ¿verdad? A arreglar estas preguntas que tenemos desordenadas. Eh, en este caso, ya tenemos nuestro ejemplo en la parte 1. Y no necesitamos ponerle la question mark o el signo de interrogación porque ya viene agregado automáticamente. So, we have the example. Vamos a encontrar la frase, you every day exercise do. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Arreglar esas frases, esas palabras las vamos a poner en orden para que nuestra pregunta diga, do you exercise every day? And we have the answer, yes, I exercise every day. So, now we have here our questions from two to five. De la dos a la cinco. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to unscrabble the statement. Le voy a dar un par de minutos, unos, what, five minutes, unos cinco minutos, para que descifremos el orden correcto de eh, estas preguntas. And then you are going to give me the answer and I'm going to type the uh, sentence and we are going to see if the sentence is correct. Cinco minutos, ustedes descubren cuál es la pregunta, me dan su respuesta, la revisamos, and that's it. Terminaríamos nuestra sesión número tres. So, five minutes from now at 8.56, a las 8.56 vamos a dar nuestra respuesta. So, let's go.
Ok, it's time. Vamos a comenzar con las oraciones. Ya es hora de que lo resolvamos. Ok, number two. Vamos con la número dos. Tenemos como respuesta at 1 p.m. And the words you, what, time, lunch, do, eat. ¿Cuál sería nuestra pregunta? What do you tie lunch? Okay. What is the first one? What? What do? Mm. No. What, what time? What time? What time do you eat lunch? Uh -huh. What time do you eat? What time do you eat lunch? Lunch. Okay. Vamos a ponerla acá. Number three. Tenemos como respuesta, no, this class starts at nine o'clock. Words at the start does eight o'clock this class. ¿Cuál sería la pregunta? This class does at the start eight o'clock. Does this class start at eight o'clock? Does this class... Mm -hmm. Does this class mm -hmm. at start? Start a at eight o'clock. Okay. okay. Ya las vamos a revisar. Don't worry. Luego number four. Uh, la respuesta. I study English in the evening. Y tenemos las palabras. Study, you, English, do, when. When do you study English? Uh -huh. When do you study English? Muy bien. And the last one, number five. Um, tenemos como respuesta. Yes, we play soccer on Saturdays. Y tenemos las palabras. On weekends, you and your friends do play sports. ¿Cómo quedaría la pregunta? Do you, do you and or your friends uh -huh. sport on weekends? In this case, play sports, okay. On weekends. Mm -hmm. Ok, vamos a revisarlas. Let's go. And all of them are correct. Todas ellas están correctas. En la primera, bueno, en este caso sería la número dos. What time do you eat lunch? ¿A qué horas te comes tu almuerzo? Um, does this class start at 8 o'clock? Esta clase empieza a las 8. Um, number five, when do you study English? Cuando estudias inglés? And the number, um, yes, number five is the last one. Um, do you and your friends play sports on weekends? Tú y tus amigos juegan o practican deportes los fines de semana? Y la respuesta era sí. Jugamos fútbol eh, los sábados. So, aquí tienen sus preguntas. Ustedes pueden ir haciendo sus anotaciones eh, o una screenshot en this case para que ustedes vayan resolviendo esa parte en la plataforma. Los que ya la resolvieron, very good, excellent job. Y los que no, pueden ir tomando apuntes para poder resolverlo cuando tengan tiempo de entrar a la plataforma. This is the um, check. Um, Knowledge Check 1.10, es el número 1.10, para que vayan ustedes haciendo sus anotaciones y resolviéndolas en la plataforma. So, um, I think we are done. Creo que ya estamos completos, estamos eh, listos para terminar la sesión. So, we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the session number four. Have a really good night and see you. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night.
Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you.